Okay, so an article, it looks like in Yahoo Life came out today. Um, and this is actually a really good example of what I was, have, have been talking about. I've been making videos, but I've been talking about this for so long. So Mindy Kaling is Asian. She's also a dark skinned Asian person. Um, we do have, you know, global, what do you, how do we say, like global uh, standards of beauty. And yes, like Mindy Kaling is an unattractive Asian woman. And she, she has a lot of other traits, but like, just in terms of like sheer attractiveness, you she's in a lane, okay? So her racial group is Asian. So please, I don't know why people do this. You cannot compare her to a black person just because the skin complexions are the same. She is compared against other Asian people. So like, I don't know why people try to do that. Like, oh, well, she looks like, you know, like, oh, her skin complexion is the same as Meg Thee Stallion. Meg Thee Stallion is black. You have to compare Meg Thee Stallion to other black women. You cannot compare her to Mindy Kaling because attractiveness, especially in terms of like racialized attractiveness, you can only talk about like in a particular group, who's the most attractive. In the Asian group, Mindy Kaling is not attractive. Just that's how it is. So don't don't bring her into black girl conversations. Like she's not she's not over here. Like she's in the Asian group. So all the dark skinned Asians can go have conversations with themselves about who's attractive and who's not. She's not black, she's not one of us. I'm literally reading her own words. Mindy Kaling 43 on reading mean reviews about her appearance. I didn't know I was so unattractive until I was the star of my own show. Mindy Kaling's life has come full circle. The groundbreaking writer, actor, and producer, 43, is opening up about how she still deals with grief following the death of her mother and how parenting two kids on her own has given her a new perspective on work-life balance. While speaking to Marie Claire on a range of topics, motherhood, mental health, her successful career for its wellness issue, Kaling discussed the experience of losing her mother to pancreatic cancer in 2012 and recalled trying to mask the emotional turmoil by working 14, 16 hours a day. That's a lot of work. Uh, I can only describe it as anguish for two years, she said, of that time. It ultimately became too much to bear on her own, which is why she decided to seek the help of a therapist. Oh, that's a good, that's good for her. Though, admittedly, it required her to unlearn cultural biases from her South Asian upbringing. That's true, too. If someone you knew or someone in your family or extended family was seeing a therapist or seeing a psychologist or going to or going on medication or anything like that, it was seen as a real problem, a real sadness or tragedy for a family, she explained. That's just the way I was raised, like the other Indian people around me. Families try to deal with it through closed doors and certainly not by asking someone outside of your family or outside of the community for help with that. That's true. I don't want my kids to grow up that way and I don't want to be that way for myself, she said, of breaking the cycle. Ultimately, it's about efficiency. I think you can get things done more if you're able to talk to the right people about the things going on in your life. I remember thinking this is extremely helpful, but this would have, um, but this would have e even been helpful when I was younger when I had issues. Yeah, a lot of people in the uh, Asian community really suffer in silence, and people just choose for whatever reason not to talk about mental health at all. It's very strange. Life is so hard, she added, and I don't think you should just have to depend on friends and family to get you through those things. Therapy, she says, has also helped her understand where her priorities should lie as a single mother of two children, Catherine four and Spencer one. I think in my 20s, I was only focused on, okay, I don't want to get fired. I want to be successful. And I was only thinking about myself, she said. In no way was I thinking about the things that are, um, important to me now, which is my health, holding the door open behind me for other people. I kind of lived a way, a way more selfish existence, which is also boring. And now I'm surrounded by so many more people, my immediate family, obviously with my children, but also this community of young women on my show. 
When reflecting on her choice to have kids on her own in her late 30s, the Never Have I Ever producer said that it was one of the smartest and most mature decisions she's made in her life. Uh, I do want to talk about that for a second too. Um, that was actually my life plan um, since I was a lot younger. Like I, I made a plan, I wrote it down when I was like 10. I was like, yeah, I'm going to adopt children. Uh, I really wanted to, to adopt like dark skinned children from India. Like that was my first goal. And then as I got older, and realized a bit more about my, my heritage. I think I'm going to adopt from Ethiopia. Like I've, I've talked pretty openly about this. So if some of you guys are wondering what my plan is, that's what I want to do. Um, and then she said, I waited until I had the means and that made all the difference. She explained of motherhood, the choice to have a child by yourself on your own terms. It was the best part of my life. It's the thing that I hope women feel confident doing by themselves. I wish every 19 year old girl would come home from college and that the gift instead of buying them jewelry or a vacation or whatever is that their parents would take them to freeze their eggs she later advised yeah they could do that once and have all these eggs for them for their futures to focus on your 20s and 30s on your career and yes love but to know that when you're emotionally ready and if you don't have a partner you can still have children this is so true the showrunner's passion to empower women in her writing, especially Indian women, is evident in her list of projects, which include HBO's The Sex Lives of College Girls. Being able to do that, she explains, is a blessing. When I write shows about Indian women and what they're interested in, I want to do something original, but I also don't want to shy away from things that I've seen before, like obsession with success, elitism about schools, she explained. These are things that are real in my family and I've been dealing with that. But also what's really important was destigmatizing mental health. Yeah. Taking on a more behind the scenes role has also revealed some ugly truths about her place in Hollywood. Oh, that's interesting. The amount of articles that were like, it's so good for a culture that this unattractive woman is finally on camera. She said of reading old reviews for her hit show, The Mindy Project, that's true. I didn't know I was so unattractive until I was the star of my own show. So not having um, to see those things now, that's wonderful. Still, nowadays, Kaling is equipped with a newfound confidence and isn't letting any of the haters bring her down. She worked too hard for that. That's true. After being so unhappy in my teenage years and in my 20s, I feel so content now, she explained. I'm so happy with my career. I love my family. I love my freedom. I have the freedom that comes with being financially stable and I don't have to uh, run anything by anybody. That's so true. I love going to set and watching these actors saying my words and coming up to me and asking my take on things. She said of her work on Never Have I Ever. It's beyond the wildest dreams that my late mother could have hoped for me. Kayleen has opened up uh, in the past about her parenting journey. In an interview with La Yahoo Life in January, the writer spoke about the timing of having children and why it was important to do it right. I didn't want to wake up and just never be able to have kids because more than writing and creating shows, my great dream in life was to become a mom. Because of my relationship with my mom, she says at the time, I had some professional things that I'd been hoping for uh, not come through or had been delayed and I just thought like, what am I doing? Like, I gotta have a kid. Now she explained, parenthood makes her treasure the time that I see my adult friends. I feel like I enjoy it so much more because of the scarcity, she said. And as most busy working parents will tell you, it's made me cut out all the people that are just not important. Like, I can't keep up with so many of those relationships anymore. It's just not going to happen. guys.